coming up on this episode. The gentleman said that they found her uh, two weeks ago. And so my assumption initially is that because her eye is covered that uh, maybe he didn't want to remove it. But he saw her with an eye that was out. And it just really makes me, I'm kind of pissed off honestly. The dog shouldn't have been like that for two weeks. Yes. Hate the dogs in the reception area. They're not good to have. I just got bit. I hate them. Why do you have them there? Don't look at me like that. Like I'm stupid. Um. <laughs> you're looking. Because I'm trying to be so polite. Good. I'm gonna be trying to be polite to you. Yeah, I could. I could see that. Those dogs have more value to me than you. So if you got bit. I'm gonna give them a raise. What's <laughs> <laughs> on the phone with the client and then they're like, ah, Because just... dogs know evil when they see it. He was they don't there. bite me because they know you're, because they know That's you're evil. No, they don't bite me because dogs sense evil. Hence, they don't like you. Evil. 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 Hence, they don't like you. Show me blood. Well, I Show me blood. Care, Show me blood. See? You're lying. Lena, just put tissue glue on it. <laughs> You're lying. What do you mean I'm lying? That's just toe fungus. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> animals are my passion. That's not what I started out with. Um, I mean, way back in the day, I was actually, you know, in the industry. Um, you know, for a split second, I thought I wanted to be an actress, but I found the creative side more interesting. So I wanted to go into like directing and films and um, writing and things like that. And um, I actually had a life once. And um, then I found a, a, a pit bull that had a note on its neck saying, whoever find me, please keep me. And that was the beginning of the end of my life. So I've always kind of wanted to like, change the world kind of you know like make an impact on the world make it a little bit better I've always been socially active and I think one of the reasons that I'm not a big fan of people per se um, is because I think people united could make such a difference and they're just so not united they're just so preoccupied with other things so um, I would like to do something that, that impacts the world a little bit, not just individual animals. I mean, this I want to continue forever and, and to, to spread all over. Uh, but that's what I really wanted to do is to just kind of like educate. And I think the only best way you can do that is through, through film or through the industry like right this, what we're doing. Don't give your dog human food. Don't give your dog chocolate. Do not give your dog bones, especially chicken bones. People think it's cool to give them chicken bones. No, I don't want to eat no grapes, nothing like that. They can, all these things can be toxic. Never give your dog or cat Tylenol, Motrin, any of those things, because that causes permanent damage. A lot of people shouldn't have animals. <laughs> Animals are not disposable love. They're not convenient love. They're not there just for you to love and throw away. Um, they're the closest thing to unconditional love you'll ever find. We, I always get that, doctors get it. Oh, you think you're so good because you're a doctor. Well, I mean, we studied really hard. And, you know, maybe we're a little bit smarter than some people because I mean we sacrifice a large portion of our young life, like practically our whole youth to become a doctor, you know? And most of the time it's not for money for me, it's certainly not money. I guess I get paid okay, but I'm not like a Beverly Hills paid doctor or anything like that. My concern is because Alex is always gloves off, you know? I mean, she, she's a very intense person. So, she, and she doesn't back down from things. She's also, in general, loud. You know, you, you can ask her, she just talks loud. And sometimes it's hard to discern, is she being angry or is she just being loud? That's an um, documentary. If you don't want to be on it, just tell them and they won't use you. Yeah. If you don't want to be a part of the documentary, then they won't use you. On what? Like a documentary on what? Animals. Ooh, it's a hot 
hospital for animals. I'm not, I'm just, I think it's funny to ask me what kind of a document. Okay, people are gonna start pissing me off already. So um, I saw the video, so Alex is talking to her, but they're yelling and it's this huge argument and all of a sudden the lady does something and Alex starts swinging. She doesn't start lady fighting, she starts swinging and then one of the employees grabs Alex and is holding her back and the lady clips Alex on her chin. She pushes three and free and they're struggling in this battle you know, over chairs and everything. So, uh, but if she's gonna fight over a dog, which is awesome, but I think she didn't have to get involved in the fight because they could have managed it a little bit better, okay? You know, when, when things like this happen, I don't wanna see her get hurt. So I'm like, get her out of there, get her out. In some situations, she needs to go in because she can handle people like that. She can, she can kind of um, um, talk to them, you know? But in this situation, that lady was like up here and then Alex was always, already kind of up there. So then that's when they got into the fisticuffs. But you know, it scares me a little bit because she's not gonna back down from it. And I don't wanna see her, like somebody bashing her face into something. So sometimes we have to keep her out of situations so she doesn't get hurt. door me and my husband's door and he was hurt and he was um hungry we fed him one time and after that he just wouldn't go nowhere and we just kept him we kept him overnight we brought him here spent like 130 dollars to get him well and uh now he's nice and healthy <laughs> he was like really really skinny he ain't skinny no more see how big he is Real big. I like Pet Care Center because they really take care of the cats. They they take their, their feelings in consideration. They um get them all nice and well. They take consider you know it's like you bring them here if they're sick. They get them nice and healthy again. They give them medic the, the proper medication they need. They get them they nurse them back to health, and that's what I like nursing them back to health. They don't just, you know, forget about them. Good Lord, Rodney. <laughs> Good Lord. It's okay, Rod. Okay. See, um, that's another thing I like. They take the blood, they do blood work. And I like that. They're thorough. They're very thorough. They're not about the money. They care about these animals' health. And I like that. They're not all about the money. They actually care about these animals' health. And I like that. I'm going to go over um, um, the blubber patches. So basically, um, everything here looks great. Everything's within a nice normal range. And th this is our red blood cells okay. and our white blood cells. There's nothing that's outside of normal here. Okay. okay. So let's see, hey, Rodney. Look at you. Look at you. What a good man. You know, you know, some vets, they don't care. They're like, okay, this is what you need and they don't give them the proper medicine that they need and they take the time and consideration with them and I like that. I'm tired of being a scapegoat just for everyone, um, especially in Kenya for not doing their job or doing their you know, negligence on what they need to do. When I first started here, Alex went and told everyone how I used to work with her at uh, this other uh, hospital and, and uh, we ran things pretty well over there so she expected me to come in here and, and do what I did at, uh, at ARC which is different, it's a completely different uh, hospital, different staff so when I started full time people weren't too happy or to see me and so they were trying to always uh, get me in trouble or do certain things to make me look um, like a bad person or not not knowing what to do or that I know what to do especially verbally she's always trying to like find anything that goes wrong like pointing it out she's always pointing it out or blaming it on me so I, I don't know I think it has to do with Alex putting this big um, idea that I was gonna come and fix everything which I don't, there's a lot of issues 
just like in every hospital. Cindy's my niece and uh, she works here as well, but uh, we really don't hang out outside of work, but sometimes it is an issue when she requests a, a day off and I request the same day off, Alex thinks we're hanging out or doing something outside of work, which that's why she doesn't like to hire family members, but we're not in the same department, so I don't think it matters. My name is Cindy Viana and I'm related to Alma, she's my aunt. Um, pretty much we just have an odd relationship, we really don't talk outside of work, we mostly talk inside of work. Um, we're getting a little closer than what we used to be because of work, so that's pretty cool. Actually, I, I, like, I like working a lot with everyone, um, just I hate when people disappear or when I need help, especially when it gets super busy. Um, I, it's just annoying when you're when you're trying to do something and then you need help and no one's there to help you. you they just disappear. So uh, pretty much you get blamed on everything um, when something's not going the way it's supposed to be going. Alex is always accusing me that I need to get laid because I'm frustrated, but she's the most frustrated here. So I think she's the one that needs to get laid and get, get rid of some of that, uh, of that frustration. So if someone out there can help, that'd be great. <laughs> So yeah, I don't really know what bothers me more, uh, what gets my gut more. Dr. Anderson not, you know, like doing her basic job, like going in and out of the rooms or when she throws her temper tantrums and she doesn't want to see the clients or Alma like dropping the ball, you know, cause she's, she used to work for me at another hospital. So I know her capabilities. So when she um, gives me 50% of Alma, it drives me crazy. So I don't know who irritates me more. So I have certain people in charge of certain things, and I mean, as they say, the shit kind of goes downhill. So um, I, Alma, especially in her section, if the uh, if the cages aren't clean, and when I walk in, I get really pissed off, and I figure, what the hell is she doing just standing there? My point is, grab your testicles, man up, and run your department. Seriously, what the fuck? I know she feels like I shouldn't hold her responsible, but she's standing there. So it's her job to make sure they do their job if I'm not there. Yeah, you need to, you need to, you need to grab them, okay? I don't have any. You wanna borrow mine? I'll give you some, I have a selection on the shelf, okay? I dust them off every day from all the men I've dated. I just put them on the shelf. I have a belief that if you won't drink from the bowl or lay in that bed, don't expect my animals to. Was her eye like this when you found her? Yeah, when I took her home and I started cleaning it, I found out she got a bad eye. Okay, all right. It might have been a little bit better for us to clean it out earlier, so we're going to have to probably sedate her. We found the dynamic behind the trash in very bad conditions. It was all dirty and we was planning to take it to the animal shelter, but uh, we know they're going to put her to sleep. These this people, they help, you know, animals like this, and people with uh, low income. I am a disability right now, and I can't afford to pay a veterinarian. That's why we are in here. And when we tried to clean her face, we noticed that her eye was Popeye, you know, it was a very bad eye. So right now, the doctor said they have to put uh, some anesthetic around and try to clean her eyes. But um, I really want to keep the dog and I'm so correct to sleep. So I went to this clinic. Uh, when? Affordable clinic. Okay, when did you go? Yesterday morning. When did you get the dog? Hmm? When did you get the dog? When did you find the dog? 
um, the same one, the same one. Uh, yes, you found the dog yesterday? No, I found the dog two, two weeks ago. So. And the eye was like this two weeks ago? That was really bad, but like you say, I'm just a really taking a photo to play with and I don't know where to go. But yesterday I was desperate, you know, I, I went to this clinic and asked for help. You know, I have a dog and I can afford to pay, can you help me? So they give me the, the name of this time. Okay, so we have a problem here, that's the, that's the thing, because um, the eye is going to go, right? So the eye is going to go, the teeth are very bad, the dog's in bad shape. Okay. So he needs to stay in the hospital. And we have to remove the eye. We have to start him on antibiotics. They still lose a lot of his teeth because of the teeth. Because the teeth are so infected. Like I said, we found the dog in an alley behind a trash can in a pretty, pretty bad condition. I would love to take it to the animal shelter, but I don't know what they do. Yeah, they will put her to sleep. She has some. She has some problems. She really does. Uh, the doctor wants to do X-rays because she can feel something in here. Okay, so she feels something in here. The teeth are bad, and the eye needs to come out. Right. Somebody probably knew there was some problems and just. Totally. This is going to be a lot of work for a little dog. I mean, they want to do X-rays, they want to do blood, because she feels something inside. Yeah, I see what you don't put in the wall for me. That's she not good. So with a little Yorkie Lisa, um, the gentleman said that they found her uh, two weeks ago. And so my assumption initially is that because her eye is covered that uh, maybe he didn't want to remove it. But he saw her with an eye that was out. And so when I see things like that, I get a little mad. And I don't know if my anger is appropriate or inappropriate if it's misplaced because if I find a dog and its eyes hanging out, I'm gonna take it somewhere. She's a mature dog. A lot of people don't look for owners. Anything could have happened. She could have gotten out of her yard, got bitten by another dog, whatever. Um, but so now we need to, more. we have to take the eye out because it's been two weeks. And it's probably badly infected eye. And she also has um, something hard in her abdomen. It's either poop or a puppy. So we need to do x-rays, we need to do a dental. Yorkies routinely have super bad teeth, but I just am a little bit upset because it's, it was like that for two weeks and it just really makes me I'm kind of pissed off, honestly. The dog shouldn't have been like that for two weeks. So this is one of those situations where I have to send Alex in. Because we're now like, you know, a nonprofit, I kind of, you know, have to back away from certain things. So we're gonna see what she's gonna help him with and what they're gonna recommend for the dog. It has a huge puppy in there. That's a little monster. It's curled and sleeping. It'll be ready to come out in a week or so. You see, you know, the teeth are going to be below the surface, so you're seeing length. But this is the head. And it's, you can see that it's got a little undershot jaw. And here's all its bones. It's curled up like a little little biscuit like that. Okay. Dad has no money today. All right. Okay. He's not going to have money in two weeks when this dog starts to die. And he's going to wait. And this dog is going to die along with the puppy. Well, I think that this dog, because it was not treated, and it has an eye that probably needs to come out, is rotting. Although I don't smell it. I think that this dog has a chance also of dying quicker right now, trying to do a spay on her. You know, so it's up to whoever's going to do the surgery. Um, I would just put her on it's antibiotics. Needs a dental. Well, I would put her on knowing that she's pregnant. I I wouldn't even sedate her. So they, let them do what they want to do. I'm not going to I'm not going to fight over it. I mean, she she just needs to be on antibiotics. It so needs to be you supported. Can sedate her to remove her eye. I wouldn't do it now. I would just put it. It's been two weeks. How old are you? Six. Six whole years old. That's pretty good. But it's okay. Right now your baby's gonna get better. And isn't that, that's what the doctors do. 
So don't cry. You don't want your puppy to cry, do you? Think good thoughts, okay? You believe, do you believe in God? There you go. Pray. It's going to be okay. All right, thank you. I still think they're lying to a certain degree. I think that, ha that the story's half true, okay? I think they did find the dog. I think that, you know, that they just couldn't afford medical treatment. Uh, but I think it's been their dog for a while. I don't think it's just recent. You guys must be sharing that, I guess, in the yeah. front. This is hers. I already spit in it. I already spit in it. Okay, let me get everybody their pizzas. Her middle name. What? Put that. Stop that. She's not funny. It's funny because that's the only thing she knows. That's all I know. And Pindejo. I know that too. Do you even know what Pindejo is? And I know Huevos. <laughs> and I know. Okay. Hold on a minute. Enchiladas. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs>